first. The amount of light produced by the flashlight. The brighter the flashlight, the greater the amount of light that reaches you. Second, the distance between the lamp and your eyes. The greater the distance between you and the lamp, the less light you receive, the less bright the lamp will be. Third, the angle at which the light falls on your eyes. The more we shift the lamp away from you, the less light reaches you. Therefore, increasing the angle of incidence of light leads to reducing the amount of light that reaches you. Illuminance is defined as the rate at which light strikes a surface per unit area. Illumination is represented by the symbol E. In order to learn more about illuminance and its unit of measurement, we must first learn about luminous flux. Luminous flux is defined in photometry as the amount of light power emanating from a light source, whether this source is natural, such as the sun, or artificial, such as lamps of various types. In the International System of Units, a unit of measurement called lumens is used to measure the amount of luminous flux. Lumens are defined as the amount of luminous flux produced by a light source that emits one candle of luminous intensity. The unit of measurement for lumens is represented by the symbol LM. Illumination is measured in lux and is symbolized by the symbol LX, which equals one lumen per square meter. To clarify, we will impose a point light source inside a sphere. If the luminous flux of the source is 1,750 lumens, how much illumination will the inner surface of the sphere be if the radius of the sphere is one meter? To find the illumination of the inner surface of the sphere, we must first calculate the surface area of the sphere through the equation of the surface area of the sphere 4 pi r square. Substituting the values, we find that the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi square meters. The amount of illuminance can be calculated by dividing the amount of luminous flux by the surface area of the sphere. By substituting the values, 1750 is divided into 4 pi. The result is 139 lux. This means that at a distance of 1 meter from the light source, 139 lumens fall from the lamp per square meter. Therefore, the illuminance of the inner surface of the sphere is equal to 139 lux. If the size of the ball surrounding the lamp increases, the radius of the ball became equal to 2 meters. What is the amount of illumination? The total luminous flux of the lamp is the same, 1,750 lumens. This is because the luminous flux depends on the lamp only. While the surface area of a sphere with a radius of 2 meters becomes equal to 16 pi, that is, the surface area of the sphere is now four times larger than the surface area of the sphere, which has a diameter of 1 meter. Therefore, the luminance of the sphere, which has a diameter of 2 meters, is equal to 1,750 lumens. Divide 16 pi. This is equal to 34 8 times 10 lux. That is, 34 and 8 lumens fall on every square meter. That is, the amount of illumination is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. While lumens are used to measure the intensity of luminous flux, the unit of candle is used to measure light intensity and the brightness of a light beam in a specific direction. The luminous intensity of a point source is known. It is the amount of luminous flux incident on one square meter from the inner surface of a sphere with a radius equal to one meter. Therefore, the intensity of illumination is equal to luminous flux divided by four pi. So in the previous example, the luminous intensity of the light bulb is it is equal to 1750 divided by 4 pi and equals 139 candles. For example, if we have a light bulb, it is located at a distance 
equal to twice the distance of a candle from the barrier, so that the luminance of the surface of the barrier facing the lamp is equal to the luminance of the surface of the barrier facing the candle. The light of the lamp must be four times stronger than the light of the candle, and therefore the intensity of the light of the lamp must be four times stronger than the light of the candle. But if the light intensity of the two sources is equal, the illumination of the surface of the barrier facing the lamp, which is at a distance from the barrier, will be equal to twice the distance of the candle from the barrier. It is equal to a quarter of the illuminance of the surface of the barrier facing the candle. This shows that illuminance has a quadratic relationship with distance. Imagine the light of a lamp directed towards you in a dark room. If the intensity of the lamp is small, it means that the lighting of the lamp will be weak, and to get strong lighting, a lamp with stronger lighting can be used. That is, increase the amount of light flux, or the lamp can be rounded so that your eyes are closer to the light source, which means reducing the distance between the light source and your eyes. It is worth noting here that all light sources are considered as point sources. Thus, illumination and distance will follow the inverse square relationship. If an object is illuminated by a point source, the luminance on the object is equal to the result of dividing the luminous flux of the light source by the surface area of a sphere of radius equal to the distance of the object from the light source. It is worth noting, the luminous flux of the light source is distributed in all directions. Therefore, a small portion of light is available to illuminate the object. This equation is only true if the light emitted by the light source falls perpendicular to the surface being illuminated. The light source must be small or far enough away so that they can be considered point sources. However, the equation does not give accurate values with regard to the illumination resulting from long fluorescent lamps or lamps near the surfaces that illuminate them. To obtain an area with equal lighting and to avoid dark areas in it, the appropriate design is distributing the light sources over the area required to be illuminated so that the distances between the light sources are equal. While driving the car at night in dark areas, the car's headlights must be adjusted at the appropriate angle to adequately illuminate the road.